behind me uh, beginning to warm up for the women's individual all-around finals in gymnastics. It's not going to be very long until that gets underway. The finalists, well, it's going to be a fascinating confrontation, really. There are four of them, two from the United States, two from Romania. Any one of the four could win the title. Why don't we meet them right now? They're smaller than jockeys, but just as courageous. As we look at them, watch their eyes, their concentrated eyes, dedicated eyes, tough eyes. This is Mary Lou Retton of the United States. She's the leader by 15 one hundredths of a point coming to the final phase. The columnist Jim Murray calls her Pete Rose in a leotard. It's pretty accurate because this is a tough young lady at age 16 out of Fairmont, West Virginia. Four feet, 10, 94 pounds. She takes a size three shoe. But make no mistake, this is a competitor. Her father was before her, backup guard in basketball at West Virginia University behind Jerry West. She's a good arm wrestler, this girl. And she won't shake under the pressure tonight. That's Mary Lou Retton. Ekaterina Zabo of Romania shouldn't shake either. After all, she and Mary Lou have had the same trainer. Bella Karolyi started this girl at age five. She first emerged at the 1982 Junior World Championships in Turkey. And last year at the World, she had five perfect marks of 10. Sabo. Julianne McNamara is tied for third, trails the leader by less than four tenths of a point. This is a very smart girl, an honors graduate of Marina High School in Huntington Beach, California, just last year. But she's a very brave girl, too. She'll take more chances, probably, than anyone else in the competition tonight. Queen Julianne of the Netherlands named a rose after her. Laura Kutina of Romania is tied with Julianne for third. The smallest of the leaders, four feet eight and a quarter inches tall and weighs just 70 pounds at age 16. She was a late starter, you might say, in this sport. Didn't begin until she was eight. Second to Mary Lou Retton in the American Cup at Madison Square Garden this spring. Yes, it's a tough and dedicated group that goes at it tonight. you're watching Kathy Johnson of the United States on the uneven bars in the all-around competition. And so far, Jack, she's moving very well. Good form, impeccable leg form, actually. And her giant swings here, getting ready for her. Dismount, a double-twisting flyaway. She knows she's hit. <laughs> Kathy Johnson, these are the 36 gymnasts from the compulsory and the optionals. They're divided into four groups of nine, and each group makes one full rotation on the four pieces of equipment, performing one optional exercise on each. Kathy Rigby McCoy, nice landing. Hmm? Nice landing, good, complete exercise. No form breaks, every move was extended. That's just what she wants. Now on the balance beam, there are four, four things going on at once here, and from the People's Republic of China, this is Cho Ping things about the Chinese team is they have terrific form. Watch this mount. Mm. Round off back handspring. A new particular ball. The round off to the board. Right into a back handspring to the straddle position. They have very good form. A 9-9 for Kathy Johnson on the uneven bar. Starting off strong. The flexibility that the Chinese have is just incredible. More so than any other country. They can split those legs. Their back arches a great deal. There's a back handspring to a layout. Slight little bobble there, but not much because of the difficulty level. Only about a tenth of a point at the most. The routine should move from one difficult element into a dance move. Fluidity is important here. And so far, Joe has it. Concentrating on her aerial walkover now, you saw that she had good height over the balance beam. Shoulders, hips, and legs should be right in line. Now, they shouldn't pause too long. You see her arms continue to move because if they stop too long, there's a deduction. And she's getting ready for her double back dismount. Oh. Perfect landing. Xiao Ping, China. A 
a very nice balance beam performance. The music you're listening to is from the floor exercises, not from the balance beam. There are four things going on here at once, so you'll be hearing some applause. And we're going to look now from our slow motion camera. And this is the aerial walkover. Look at how high her shoulders. She just kind of steps over her body with every part of her body in line. Let's take another look at that dismount. She fits both feet onto the balance beam. That beam is only four inches wide, so you can see that it's very easy to slip off, but she doesn't, and she is right in the air at the right place in the tuck position and lands extremely well. Now just waiting for her score again. Yes, we all. Julianne McNamara of the United States will be next on the balance beam. She's in the same group with Ekaterina Zabo and Simona Palka of Romania, who are along with their teammate, Laura Coutina, the strength here. The only advantage to having beam as your first event is that you get it out of the way. It is the most difficult event when you're nervous. And as you remember, in the team competition, Julianne got up and had almost eight minutes to wait before she could compete. But under the right circumstances, Julianne knows how to deal with the nerves. There's Xiaoping, who's from Beijing, 16 years. 90 pounds of her, and Julianne waiting again. The other night she was saying at that long, <laughs> long wait and fell off. Well, at least she doesn't have to wait on top of the podium. She can move around a little bit more when she's on the ground. Once you step onto the podium, it's a little bit difficult to warm up. But here is the Another judges' conference. conference. Once again, when there is a discrepancy between the two middle scores, there is always a conference. Time. The floor exercise has begun. The music you can hear, and here it is. Ma Young Hung, and Ma has performed with the first woman from China to win a world championship medal on the uneven bars, and now she's performing very well so far on the floor exercise. This has been a weak event for the Chinese in the past because of their tumbling skills. Not a great deal of strength, but they've improved. And you should particularly watch the toe point and the flexibility that the women from China have. They're looking at the all-around competition. This is girl against girl. They're looking for the best woman gymnast here at these Olympic Games. They will each perform one exercise on each of the apparatus, and at the end of the evening, whoever has the most points will get the gold medal. And Ma's last tumbling run should correspond to the difficulty of the first run. A little bit low on that landing, still a little bit weak in the area of strength, but the dance is good, and the flexibility is sure there. 21 years old, Ma Yan Hong, 5 foot 1, 90 pounds. That's a 980 on the beam there for the other. Xiaoping. Xiaoping. And now Julianne McNamara will go on the balance beam. Julianne starts with a press to a handstand. Usually, this is, is a mount that you can control fairly easily. She goes into a one arm, and this is where she had trouble during the team competition. Here she goes into her press. Tough event to start first. Now she knows she has to control this, get her concentration together. She didn't hold it very long. I know that her coach, Bella Caroli, was counting her in practice to hold it at least three seconds. But when you're under this kind of pressure, sometimes that's difficult to do. Three or four tenths of a point. We have a microphone on Billy Karogi. Maybe he'll be commenting on this. There's two back handsprings in a row. Now here's another handstand Julianne does. She works very well on hands. Watch this, a planche, and she goes into a back hip circle out of this. particular move she always has under control. And here's another back handspring, gainer back handspring actually. Shoulders, hips in line with the balance beam at all times. When you get them out stand of up. order that, as you can hear Bella there, he says stand up. How many people do you have? And a double twisting dismount. This one and one more. And there are Julianne's parents looking on. 
and it will make sure. Let's take a look at the break again, Kathy. The tumbling moves they're now doing are so incredibly difficult when you have nothing to hold on to. You, it looks like she's right on, but she lifts her shoulders up, and there she goes. And that little touch on the balance beam there, she didn't quite grasp the beam with both hands, so it will not be a full point, but at least a three-tenths. Let's see if her hips and shoulders are in line. She kicked her foot directly over the beam. It looked like she was right on, but obviously I think her last foot as it came down threw her off. And that's too bad because the rest of the routine was very good. Waiting on Julianne's score. Julianne's score. And while we are, we'll report to you that Ma Hung got a 9.3 only on that floor exercise. Now, Julianne, on this double twisting dismount, was a little bit to the side of the beam. She should be directly behind it. Let's see how much the judges take off in direction. And the music starts for the next floor exercise while Julianne waits. competition you really can't have any major breaks and the parents waiting more apprehensive perhaps than Julianne herself I recall that my parents they hated watching they almost oh, looked I away bet. every time yeah. I competed and uh, you can bet they do that too well we're told that Lara Coutina of Romania who is tied with Julianne McNamara coming into this uh, competition for third place, just got a 9-9. Nine, nine. And Julianne gets 9-5-5. Five, five. So that tie has been quickly broken on the first apparatus. Next up on the balance beam will be Romania's Ekaterina Zapo. During the team event, she received a 9-9-5 coming off a fall on the bars. You could tell that she was mentally strong, and uh, she begins with a straddle press mount. It's very secure for the most most of the time. <laughs> Makes it look so easy. Look at the split and watch this planche. Shoulders over the beam and she counterbalances with her legs. Talk about strength. This is the young woman that uh, they left coach when she was five years old. Must be interesting for him to watch. Now watch this. Four back hands. Let's see if she throws all four and she does. Oh, solid. Incredible tumbling series. This is the kind of acrobatic series that is a requirement, although you don't always have to do four back handsprings. It can be one of many acrobatic moves. You can see that she's aggressive on the beam. She doesn't hold back or try to control things too much, which can sometimes throw you off more than if you just let go and concentrate. Back handspring, back layout, solid. Very interesting back walk over sequence there. Katarina can nail this balance beam routine. She has her most difficult event out of the way. And of course, Mary Lou has the balance beam yet to come. She's looking very confident. Yes, she is. Oh. And that's going to be hard to beat. Patty Zabo of Romania. <laughs> She's happy about that, obviously. You say she has everything. Grace, speed, concentration, stage presence, and strength. The second Nadia, they call her, and here is the first, the one and only, Nadia Komenich, looking on as her heir apparent performs very solidly here on the balance yes, beam. Yes, she does. Let's take a look at those. Let's see if this is the four back handsprings. This beam is 16 feet long, and to fit four back handsprings is very difficult. The timing and the height of the back handspring are critical. And let's take a look at that dismount. You can see she lands both feet on the beam. And she goes over the, the beam in her double back, which is pretty tricky because if you're cl too close to that end, you could hit. She's very happy with it. My goodness, what a not marvelous exercise. What a way to start. You're supposed to make it look as if it's 40 feet wide instead of 4 inches wide, and that's just what she managed to do there, didn't she? Yes. Mary Lou Retton about to go on the uneven bars. Getting all ch chalked up there. Now, her exercise is made up to accentuate her power. Waiting on Ekaterina's score. And the audience getting very impatient at this point. Here it comes. There it is. That's him. Perfect. Wow. Man. What a way for Ekaterina. 
Serena to begin on the balance beam and with a perfect 10. Talk about confidence. And Mary Lou knows it's a 10. She's looking right down at that part of the arena, and she will need a 9-9 now to maintain that slight lead that she has over Zabo. And you can see that she knows she has to concentrate on the unevens, not on the 10. That's right. She has power. She's aggressive. Of course, the floor exercise and the vault are her best events, but uh, she doesn't hold back anything on the unevens either. There's a delay up there for the previous... Oh, here we go, the green light. She mounts with a half twist to the high bar. There she goes. Right to the handstand, perfect timing. Her knees bent slightly on that reverse heck, but I don't think the judges will take off. They didn't in the previous competition. The giant swing, stomach whip, right to the red and flip. Her peach basket is right to a handstand. Timing is just right with Mary Lou tonight, so far. Down with a half twist. Mary Lou. Linda Evans of Dynasty applauding that performance by the little lady from Fairmont, West Virginia. <laughs> a real gymnastic enthusiast. That's what Mary Lou does to all of us. She makes us, makes us gasp. Let's take a look at the dismount in super slow motion. And you can see that the grasp on the bar is so important to hold on hard enough to stay on the event, but to let those hands move around freely enough to execute the moves. And here's her dismount. She goes high above that low bar, gets those hips in the air, makes a half twist, and that is a comb in each dismount. Zabo has electrified the early rotation here with a perfect 10 on the balance beam, which many consider to be the most difficult piece of apparatus. And Mary Lou right now getting ready to take off those hand grips and prepare for the balance beam, which is uh, a solid event for her. She rarely misses. She has all her elements down uh, quite strong. And she just got out a great bar routine. And I'm there it is, and it disappointment from the crowd here. It is a nine eight five, I think, Jack, if I could see. Nine eight five. Nine eight five for Mary Lou Retton on her first rotation in the all-around competition. Marie Gold Howard after the first rotation. This was the situation. Mary Lou Retton of the United States and Zabo were tied for the lead. Laura Coutina and Simona Palka were next. And here in the second rotation on tape is Ekaterina Zabo, tied with Mary Lou Retton now. Jack, it seems like it's, excuse me, it's coming down to who is the toughest mentally. This is the third day of competition. One compulsory, one optional out of the way, and now this. And they're a little tired mentally and physically. So this is where they have to stay peaked. And, and Ekaterina started with a full in double back. She was a tiny bit low, not bad though. Especially for the difficulty level. Interesting floor music. It was selected to capture the attention of the American people, and uh, it's really hand clapping music. The flexibility there. This is a, a fascinating run. Talk about intricate tumbling. She does a one and a half twist, steps out right into a Can you do all that in such a short space of time? <laughs> well, the floor exercise mat is 40 by 40, and you try to take as few steps as possible in the beginning, but get as much power going as possible. <laughs> the last tumbling run is a round off back handspring, double back, right oh. on. She stands straight up at the end. Tati Zabo, that was her floor exercise on videotape a few minutes ago, and for it she got a 995, and that's going to really put the pressure now on Mary Lou Redden, who has yet to come up on her second rotation on the balance beam, which has been 
our downfall. Yes, it has. We have to learn to stay a little tougher. Here's a Katarina's full in. And you'll see that she pulls it around, but she's just a little bit low with her shoulders. Difficult move. You're doing two somersaults, plus you're twisting on the first one. But she holds on to it. That's why she's so good. She's tough. This, the, uh, everything a champion needs. Here's her one and a half twist. Right into a round up back hamstring. She does another one. Ha has to finish the twist perfectly straight up and down in the vertical position so that she's right in position for that front flip. And of course, this last tumbling run takes an awful lot of endurance. It's a double back. Shoulders go straight up in the air, and she lands it perfectly. A 9.95 for Ekaterina Ek Zabo. Let's go to Al Michaels now. Zabo has a 9.95 in the second rotation. And I wouldn't want to be in Mary Lou's position right now. This has got to be the most pressuring event and time for Mary Lou. She needs a 9.95 to keep tied, or a 10 to go ahead. She has been very tough on this event. So far, back walk of right into a back tuck. At one time, this was a difficult event for Mary Lee to, to be consistent on. She sends work with yes. Bella on this. And that's Bella saying right on it. Way to go, Mary Lou. of Bella Caroli, her coach, yeah. former coach of Nadia Comaneci. As you listen to him talk, you can bet that those same thoughts are going through Mary Lou's mind. When she is in practice, he talks to her just like that, so he, she can also yes. hear his voice. incredible strength in the legs as we've said many times here's our front flip try to stay on on that particular move hip shoulders right in line she does overcompensate a little bit but she covers it up and that's important on the balance beam you try not to let the judges think or know that you've made any mistakes so you use arm movements to cover up a little bit and here's her dismount watch how she is way above the balance beam and she opens up almost in a vertical position look at your leg and be ready okay Bela Caroli telling her to get ready now. Now ahead of her are two of her strongest events, aren't they? That's the floor right. Floor exercise she, and the vault. She is home free as far as the floor X and vault are concerned. So the good competition between Mary Lou Retton and uh, Ekaterina Zabo of Romania, along with Laura Kutina and Simona Palka of Romania, who are very much in it. And the difference between first and fifth place could be a slight bobble mm -hmm. and, of course, a fall. It doesn't take much. So even though she is home free on the floor exercise and on the vault, she can make no little mistakes. And she's trying to get mentally prepared for that now. As you said, fatigue now becomes a factor. Stamina, they've been at it here all week. Yes, it's easy to, especially mentally. They're, these women are prepared physically, uh, although two days of competition under this kind of pressure can and take it out of you. But mentally, you have a tendency to relax a little bit. And once you relax your concentration, you can have a slip up. Mary Lou Retton. Oh. We're going to show you the waiting, still waiting. Her eyes are piercing through that yes. scoreboard. <laughs> She knows that this is here. an important mark. If she can stay right at the top, then she knows the last two events she has. Nine eight. Nine eight oh. So she's gonna lose some ground, but not much. She 
as we told you, has two of her strongest events coming up in the vault and on the floor exercise. 980 on the balance beam for Mary Lou Retton. What a lady with courage. She attacks every event. Now, a little earlier, right before uh, Mary Lou Retton, Laura Coutinho of Romania was on the balance beam. Now, she maintained confidence and aggressiveness throughout the entire routine. Well, you can see her lead. She did have trouble on the dismount, which we'll get to in a second, but watch the fluidity in which she does this back answering into two back layouts. I believe that's what's coming up now. Yes. Oh, no. One. This one was only one. Little bobble there. This is her full turn. To a little movement on the balance beam, back bend on the beam, showing flexibility in the back and the legs. Concentrating on the balance beam has to begin with the mount all the way to the time the feet hit the mat. And that's where Laura got into trouble. This is her aerial walkover. That's where that little lax and confidence and mental attitude just got away from her. That leap is, is a little bit low, and so was that jump. The judges want fullness on every move. With complete split, as high as possible. And this is where the problem came in, right here, on our dismount. And this pause is a little bit long. It was, feet got under her. She was so high, so full of adrenaline that she just held on to her tuck position too long, and her feet got in under her. And that's a five-tenth of a point deduction. But she manages to stay in fourth place, or third place, rather. Oh, no, fourth place, right behind Simona Palka, her teammate. Let's take a look at it in slow motion. Okay, here's a back handspring into a back layout. Now you'll see she just had a little bobble right there. She tried to cover it up. When you're in flight over the balance beam, you cannot be a hair off. You can see why this event is so critical. And the level of difficulty is high. Anything can happen. Most gymnasts feel when they get this event over, then they're home free. Laura has very good arm movements. You can tell that she has had ballet. 9-4-0 is what they gave Laura Coutina. And at the end of the second rotation, Zabo is 15 hundredths of a point ahead of Mary Lou Retton and will return with more Olympics in a moment. Halfway through the women's all-around competition, Zabo of Romania leads Retton of the United States by 15 hundredths of a point, with Palka of Romania in third and Coutina in fourth. Now, just a few moments ago while they were warming up, you'll see how dangerous this balance beam can be. It is the most difficult of all the apparatus for the women, but watch this. You saw her, her she was doing a double back. What a, a terrible injury. She Elke hurt her Heine back. of West Germany. They carried her off, but we don't know yet the extent of that injury, but... Uh... That one foot off the beam. Now on tape, here is the second vault of Julianne McNamara. The women get two vaults and, of course, keep the highest. And it was a full twisting Sukahara. She landed much higher than the first vault, with no steps. 995 for Julianne McNamara. And coming up next on the ball, a Katarina Zabo, the leader. A Katarina got a perfect 10 on her vault in the team competition. And this crowd is going crazy for Julianne. She hit both vaults. The second was much better. Hey, Katarina is ready. Hey, Katarina does the same vault as Julianne, except in the pike position. Good direction. What a landing. Oh. Another good one for Zabo. She has been on all night, hitting every event, as we said, mentally tough. Has competed in many international meets. Let's take another look at that vault. Speed is so important. She wants a ricochet effect off the horse. Her arm should be straight as she pushes off. Good position in the air. Good position on the landing as well. 
slight step back, but she really didn't step too much, so they're not going to take off here. Body is straight position over the horse. And you can see that she's trying to stay in a straight line directly behind that horse, which she's had trouble in the past with. Nine, nine, oh. For Zabo's first ball. She can get a little more height and distance and not take have any extra body movement. Then she will get a higher score. She's the same height as Mary Lou Retton, but weighs seven pounds less. And I think it's all in the legs. Mm -hmm. Concentration. She doesn't have the same speed as Mary Lou. No. A little bit lower. She won't receive more than a 9-9 for that. It wasn't quite as good as the first one. Here's another look at it, Kathy. Okay, the speed here is very important. Those arms moving quickly, the legs up. Good position on the horse. She wasn't, didn't get quite as much distance away from the horse as she should. If your timing is not exactly on, if you don't have that speed going forward, it's difficult to get the distance. It looks like she was a little bit too much on the, be on the front side of the horse instead of on top of it a little bit more. And she didn't quite grasp both legs together. She had one hand holding on. 9.8, so she'll keep the first one, 9.9. Nine. That's for the leader, a Katarina Zabo of Romania. The Romanians are first, third, and fourth coming into this rotation. And at the vault now is Kelly Wilson of Australia. Kelly has her own little stuffed animal that she keeps right on her chair. I wonder how many of the athletes have uh, little good luck pieces with them. <laughs> this has been a great opportunity for the Australians. Full on, handspring off. Except for the boycott, they would not have been able to be here. They had to be in the top 12 as, as a team to be able to compete in the Olympics. And here is my young hung on the uneven bars a few minutes ago. This lady got a 10 earlier in the team competition, has been world champion on this event, tough competitor. That was a reverse hecht we just saw. She went right into a clear hip. Look at the toe point, hecht, half twist. She has one intricate move after another, and she swings well, which is one of the requirements. Little pike on that handstand. And this dismount will blow you away. It's called a, a hecht with a backflip with a full twist. <laughs> Inc incredible spring off the bar. Perfect 10 again for Ma Yan Hong. We're back live now, and we're looking at Laura Kutina and the floor exercise. As we saw in the team competition, she has a unique routine choreographed so well. Playful, theatrical type of music. She begins with also with a full and double back. Mm. That's the kind of landing you want to have. This is one of her great strengths, the floor. She doesn't seem to grow tired in this event. Has nice endurance. And as we said in the team competition, she will answer phones. She will do all kinds of antics. And her second tumbling run. Down off that handspring. One and a half. Double to a triple twist there. The Romanian women have been very strong mentally. The Australian girl we saw a moment ago, Kelly Wilson, got a 9-2 for that ball. Actually, I have mixed up Paupa's routine with Putina. She actually has more of the balletic style, which she has practiced a great deal. You watch her in warm-up. She works on the ballet. Double back! More of elegance of Tereshiva. Mm -hmm. Laura Kutina of Romania, she's in fourth place coming into this rotation. Let's watch that full in double back. This is where the gymnast does a double back and does the full twist on the first back flip. You can't run too far because if you do, you have a tendency to step out. It's a difficult tumbling run to control. You have to go up, complete the first twist and the first back flip before your feet even get to the vertical position. And she holds on to it a little bit low there, but she didn't touch her hands. Not too big a deduction, maybe a tenth. 
She takes quite a few steps, actually, for her last tumbling run. And does a double back. She's very high on it. And no problem there. Only 16 years old. And there it is, 9-9 nine, nine for Laura Coutina. And she is doing herself a lot of good here. And there's her coach, pretty proud. And, and we'll be back with more Olympics in just a moment. Pavilion on the UCLA campus for women's gymnastics, the all-around competition in rotation number three. In a few moments, Mary Lou Retton will be going on the floor exercise. A few moments ago on videotape, this was Simona Pauka on her vault. And Simona over-rotated her vault and she sat and you can see that her legs were apart on the very beginning and she just couldn't hold on to it. She has another chance to do the vault. The best of the two counts. Well, here is Simona in third place after two rotations. She got in here because Agaki, who was considered one of the top gymnasts in Romania, fell off two of the apparatus and didn't make it here to the final, yes, or for the all-around. And here comes Simona with some very nice scores. And Simona has not had major international competition under her belt, and yet she has, as you say, Jack, performed incredibly well. Waiting for the judges now, and it looks like there's a bit of a conference. Girls get two vaults, they take the best. Men only get one. And of course, the successful vaults begin with a strong run. They explode off the horse and the board and get their feet up and over their head. And you can see that this, the lady to the left of your screen is Madame Simonescu, who is Romanian. And she is arguing some points here. Sharon Valley, Sharon Weber from the United States. Take a look at it in super slow motion. You can see that her knees bent right in the very beginning. She was probably either on the wrong foot or her takeoff was just off in some way. She looked high enough to continue the ball, but just didn't have the speed to get all the way around. She's pulling those legs to her chest as hard as possible. In fact, she did, overdid it just a little bit, and that caused her to over-rotate. Tried to hold on to it, but there's no way when you are rotating that quickly. We get some idea of the depth of the Romanian women just here tonight. They have that great gymnastics center in Deva, which was the legacy of Nadia Comaneci. And they're producing marvelous women gymnasts. With the great inspiration of Nadia. There's Mary Lou Retton waiting to go on the floor exercise. Uh, Simona Pauka warms up by doing some backflips. <laughs> Keep loose, waiting for the score. Mary Lou doesn't look as effervescent as usual tonight, to me, for some reason. Well, she, I think with that first 10 that Zabo received, it really has to knock you out a little bit. She did two good routines on the uneven bars and balance beam, but this is her event. The floor exercise. She plays with the crowd. She opens with a double layout higher than anyone in the competition and only one of two doing it in this Olympics. 9-3-0 for Simona Palka's first vault. Mary Lou Retton gets the green light. She's ready. She is trailing. A Katarina Zabo by 15 hundredths of a point. Because of her great difficulty in the, this event, there's a, a lot of risk. Nine times out of ten, she'll hit the routine perfectly. I think we've all come to expect that from her. Here it is, the double layout. And she is oh. on. There's a dose of energy from Mary Lou. wasn't enough. She, her next tumbling run is a full twisting double back. This is what she had trouble in, in on the team competition. Let's see if she hits it. And she's there! Oh, very nice. Walker got 9-9 on her second ball. And Mary Lou on her way to a nice 
high score if she maintains this. If she can get her last tumbling run perfect. And this crowd knows what to expect from Mary Lou. There it is. Round off back handspring. Double tuck. What a gymnast. The strongest legs in the entire competition. Mary Lou. How do you do? <laughs> If she were a tourist attraction, she'd be Niagara Falls, I think. <laughs> I think you're wow. right. Wow. Take a bow, Mary Lou. And all the flags are waving. Here's our second tumbling move. For Kathy. most of the gymnasts, this full and double back was their first tumbling move because it takes so much endurance and strength and Obviously, we've said many, many times, Mary Lou's incredible thigh and leg strength is what propels her into the air. Look at the position. She's almost laid out on that move. Right at the edge of the mat, she did not step out. She's inside the 40-foot square. And that was a tremendous pull and double back. There's Bela Karogi, her coach. They're waiting. Oh, base going to be ready, sir. All right. There is no way. So there's no way that she shouldn't get a 10. Well. That's it, a 10. Yes, Mary Lou, a 10. Finally for Mary Lou on this event. That's it. Listen to Bela. <laughs> I don't know who's happier. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Standing ovation here at Pauley Pavilion for Mary Lou Rett. That pulls her within five hundredths of a point of Zabo for the lead. And the battle's on. Mary Lou has her best event coming up, although how can you do better than a 10 <laughs> on vaulting? She nailed a 10 in the team competition. Pressure is now on Ekaterina Zabo. All right, we'll be back with more excitement from the women's all-around competition at Pauley Pavilion in a little while. Back at Pauley Pavilion for the final rotation, and the all-around is really close. You're looking at Ekaterina Zabo of Romania, who is leading by five hundredths of a point over this young lady, Mary Lou Retton, who is in second place. The gold is between the two of them. The bronze pretty much now has the belongs to Simona Pauka. Now, Mary Lou is on the vault, which is one of her strong uh, events. Uh, Ekaterina is on the uneven bars, which is not one of her strong events. No, she has to struggle on this event. She doesn't move and swing as fluidly as she should. However, if she gets aggressive with it and she keeps all her form and everything under control, then she can do very well. 17 years old at the Olympic Games, but a lot of pressure here. Coming into the final rotation for a gold medal in the all-around. Just about ready to go. Here's the rundown. Floor exercises have started, as you can hear from the music, but they're still warming up on the uneven bars. Julianne McNamara is on the bar warming up at this point. Hey, Katarina will be first off. She's been under this kind of pressure before. She's faced the Soviet Union. German Democratic Republic, she knows what it's like and she knows how to handle it. She awful, lot, awful lot to learn when you're 17 years of age. Yes. Mary Lou Retton, very close to a gold, just five hundredths of a point away, and that is just a tremble or a little misstep here. Well, if she can land her vault without any steps, if you can have no body movement, an extra body movement, she has that 10 almost sewed up. Nobody gets the height or the distance that Mary Lou does on vault. Now Zabo getting chalked up to prepare the bar for her. Or the bars. Water and chalk. 
as, as we were talking, Jack, you were saying there was a lot of pressure on the judges, and that's absolutely true. They want to make sure that they give the exact right score. Yes, they have a pressure situation. Here's a vault over the low bar. There was a little hop of the hands there, but no deduction. Handstand front, right into a front zone. She missed that in practice, held on to it there, and is moving quite well so far. Oh, One and wow. a half twist, double leg shoot through, putting everything she has into it. You can tell that she's controlling this routine. And getting ready for her dismount now. Double fly away, stand straight up. Mary Lou has her work cut out for her on the vault. A very strong and steady performance here by Ekaterina Zabo. This is the one and a half twist made popular by the head judge, actually, Torisheva. It's a one and a half twist. Her feet come off the bar. Watch her arms. Now they have to remain on top of the bars. And she grasps. She's very close to the side of the bar. She has to readjust herself so that she doesn't hit the guy wires there. And she's holding on. You can see it in her face. And let's take a look at that double flyaway. She needs to get the speed going here. She needs a lot of height. She should be above that high bar. And here she goes. Lands almost in the vertical position. A little step there. And here's the score coming up. 9.9. So if Mary Lou can hit a 10, she will win. And that's, she's capable. She hit it in the team competition. I'm sure she's holding her breath now, knowing what she has uh, to do. She's got a long wait, doesn't she? She now? certainly does. <laughs> First off here, she, Mary Lou goes off about fifth. It's a long wait for both Jonas. All right, over at the vault. This is Laura Coutina, first ball. Half on, and a full twist. Sumahara with a full twist, very high in the air. She received a 9.9 .9 for that vault, and she's getting ready for her second vault. Now our second one. And it will be the same vault. That a successful ball really begins with a strong accelerated run. It really is the basics to the entire ball. Timing of the feet of going over the head and a good push off. Little step there, but not bad. She got height and distance, just what the judge was looking for. I'm sure she would have liked to have not had any body movement. 16 years of age. Pretty face and a bright future for this young lady, Laura Coutina. She's really been one of the strengths of the team. Position in the air is good. She gets really more distance than she does height. And the judges do award a little bit more for the distance. Well, she had the 9-9 on the first ball and waiting. I'll tell you that Mary Lou needs a 10 to win the gold medal or a 9-9-5 to tie. 9-8-5 for Lara's second, so she'll keep the 9-9. Whether Christina Gregoris. We'll be going to local news as close to 11 o'clock as possible. So looking at Bonnie Whitmire from Canada. As Bonnie gets ready for her vault. Canada is continually building their gymnastic team. It has been a popular sport since the 72 Olympics with Olga Corbett as it started in the United States. They haven't come quite as far as the U.S. But there's a handspring front. Little hop there on the end. And that actually is worth only a 9.8 in the code of points. So the judges will deduct from that point, not from a perfect 10. So you can see that she got good height. She should have had her feet out in front of her just a little bit more because she held on too long and that caused her to over-rotate slightly. Now Bonnie has another vault and then Natalie Davies of uh, Great Britain and then Mary Lou Redden. And she gets 9.60. 9.60 for Bonnie Whitmire. We'll be back to Pauley Pavilion in a little while. We're back at Pauley Pavilion in this final rotation, waiting to see who's going to win the gold, Romania or the United States. Ekaterina Zabo of Romania is finished. 
We're waiting for Mary Lou Retton of the United States who needs a perfect 10 in the, in the vault to win or a 995 to tie. And Simona Paca of Romania, who is in third place right now, is about ready to go on the uneven bars. Part of the great depth in these Romanian women. Here's Mary Lou. She's up next in the vault. And the girl you saw that fell off the balance beam, Elke Heine of West Germany, is uh, in the hospital. She has a hyperextended back, but is all right, is what we're told. And I think very lucky. Mm. And another little scratch today, one of the Chinese girls, Wu Jin Li, uh, dislocated her yeah. elbow and uh, had a scratch. What a disappointment that is. In these two weeks, every four years. Hmm? Mary Lou stall walking again. That's huh? right. She's pacing back and forth. She knows she can hit that 10. She's done it before many, many times. She has two chances, so the odds of her doing it there are very great. Finally, have the green light on the vault. So Natalie Davis of Great Britain is ready for her first vault. And a red light over on the uneven bars. And now that has gone green, and Simona Palka is ready on the uneven bars. And what a surprise for the Romanian team. Her first world competition is right here at the Olympics. She started with a straddle over the low bar. This lady doesn't give away points. She works with a loose body. There's her half twist front flip. Very smooth. Doesn't get a great deal of swing. But she has the difficulty. Half twist. Here she goes, getting ready for a dismount now. She moved from one bar to the other very well. Nice routine. Not quite the swing, but no big form breaks. Simona Paco is in third place coming into this rotation with a comfortable lead over Lara Coutina, her teammate. Mary Lou is still waiting. The red light is still on on the vault. She's at the starting line, but we'll wait with her. Remember, she needs 995 to tie, a 10 to win. Mary Lou has been mentally tough throughout the entire competition. She's had one pressure after another watching a Caterino get tens before her. And I hope she has her wings on today for this vault. Well, she has to keep her 990. And that will keep her for the bronze in third place. Finally, the score goes up on the ball, and Mary Lou will be ready in just a moment. Here. She does what is called a layout Sukahara with a full twist. There is the green light. The distance she gets on this particular vault is about 22 feet. She has two vaults, remember. I think if they don't give her a 10 here, the judges may fear for their life. That's right. They will tear the roof apart. <laughs> Boy, she landed. There it is. She did it. 10, the gold medal. The gold medal goes to Mary Lou Rick. Oh, what a party they'll have in Fairmont, West what Virginia nice tonight. God. Good God. She 
she has another ball and she's going to take it, huh? Well, if she does the same thing, which <laughs> she does. It was no accident, folks, huh? Just to prove it. Oh, look at this. He's not tired now. No. Oh, what a tightly wrapped package of explosives. Mary Lou Retton. away from the family mom and dad it was all worth it <laughs> another 10 they gave her a 10 on the second one too The second place finisher, very disappointed, obviously, and understandably so, a marvelous gymnast. Two champions. I have a feeling that uh, Patty Zabo and Mary Lou Retton are going to be having many duels in the years to come. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Actually, the world championships are coming up right after this. <laughs> <laughs> and again, De Caterina Zappo. He came so close. And it all comes down to that 9-3 on the uneven bars when she fell. <laughs> Good. Fantastic. Fantastic. So for Bela Karodi, it's rather a closed circle, too. Nadia Komenich's coach for those great years, and now Mary Lou Retton's coach. And I'm sure and he's feeling the same thing he felt with Nadia. And he also coached this young lady when she was a small girl. Well, here's the one that did it for Mary Lou Retton in super slow motion. Those legs are what get her around. Look at this punch. She gets all the way turned, halfway around, lays that body straight as a pencil. Look at those legs, no separation whatsoever. Way above the horse. And there is no movement on this landing. She just sticks it. She doesn't have much to land on either. She's got size three foot. <laughs> there she is, the new darling. Mary Lou Retton of the United States, the gold medal winner, will be back in a moment. A lot more coming, but I'll tell you, watching what just happened there, do you, you get the feeling sometimes during this week that maybe it's all a dream or maybe that since we're in Hollywood, it's a script that's been written and acted out. You could be forgiven for feeling that way. Not in the wildest dreams could you imagine the Americans having the successes they've had, but Mary Lou Retton did in fact do it. A very moving and exciting moment for Miss Mary Lou Retton. We're back at Pauley Pavilion. You hear the trumpets announcing the fanfare, which will usher in the award ceremonies. Here are the final, the final standing. And Julie Ann McNamara pulled herself up from sixth to fourth with this marvelous routine on the uneven bars. Julie Ann has the best swing in the competition. She moves from one bar to the next with great difficulty, as you can see on her mount. She twists, she releases the bar. Here's one release. Right on. And her legs horizontal to the bar as she swings. She makes every move look so simple. And that's the secret of gymnastics. And there's her dismount. Front with a half twist, and she nailed it for the perfect 10. And that perfect 10 took her into fourth place. We're back live now as the gymnast enter once again. Still coming up, we're going to have action in women's volleyball, which has been very exciting. But right, U.S. against China. There's Mary Lou and Kyle.
Scotty. One of the ironies here is that on the vault, the last rotation in which Mary Lou won with her perfect 10, the chief judge was a Romanian. That must have been a, an interesting moment for that judge. <laughs> Of course, she didn't have anything to do with the scoring, unless there was a discrepancy, and there obviously wasn't. There are the medal winners. The award presentations will be made by Dr. Edward Hay, representing the International Olympic Committee, and the president of the FIG Women's Technical Committee, Ellen Berger. There is the gold. Représentant les États-Unis d'Amérique. Winner of the gold medal, scoring 79.175, representing the United States of America. Winner of the silver medal, scoring 79.125, representing Romania, Ekaterina Zabo. Winner of the bronze medal, scoring 78.675, representing Romania, Simona Pauca. Pavilion crowd. I think they all realized how much each one of these women fought for the medals. And a surprise for Romania, Simona. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem of the United States of America.
Chapman at Pauley Pavilion will return after this word from your local stations. Who else would be with me right now but Mary Lou Ratton, gold medalist in the women's all-around competition. It was absolutely imperative that Mary Lou score two perfect tens in order to win that gold medal. A couple days ago, you broke on that floor routine. Was that weighing very heavily on your mind tonight? I mean, it was. I had a little break in it earlier in the competition, and I knew I had to make it tonight, and I was determined to make it, and I did. Such tremendous pressure you must have been feeling. Now you went to the vault. It's your best event. Yeah. You had to stick it. That, I'm glad I ended on vault, because I, I did have that added pressure on me, but I worked better under pressure, and I knew I had to stick it, and I did. All right, everybody's dying to know, what does it feel like to be oh. the world champion, the best in the world in gymnastics? Oh, my God, I can't express the feeling. The long, hard years of work have paid off, and it's, every bit of it was worth it. You were absolutely well, marvelous. You. The crowd loves you, and congratulations. Thank you, thank so you much. very much for Can stopping by. Can I say hi? hi to everybody on Baltic Street, and hi to the Retton House. Thank you. And hi to Jim McKay, too. Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Lou Retton, the first American to be queen of world gymnastics. You know, I've never shaken her hand, but I'd be willing to bet it would be one of the firmest handshakes you've ever experienced. And I sure would like to shake her hand tonight because she did exactly what she had to do coming to the last event of the whole thing with the big crowd and a billion people around the world watching. She needed the perfect mark and she got it. What an exciting thing to see. UCLA's Polly Pavilion, two people that have made history twice. Bella Caroli and Mary Lou Retton. Bella, you've got thousands of young girls right now that want to be gymnasts. What can you say to them? How much has Mary Lou Retton's style changed the style of gymnastics, and will it hold in the future? Well, certainly they got a new idol, a new American idol. After that many Russians, Romanians, finally we got a American new idol, and I am so glad. I'm so glad for them. I'm so glad for this beautiful sport. From now on, we're going to have thousands and thousands of new Rattons <laughs> coming up on yep. the gymnasiums and certainly our next Olympic Games we're going to have new American kids representing hey, Bella, you must have had mixed emotions because one of your gymnasts had been a Katerina Zabo. Were That's they right. mixed and I, I know the bond with coaches, I had a yeah. coach, a distance a little bit and then that bond. How did you deal with it? Well, uh, you're right, you know, it was a mixed emotion. Uh, competing against them but at the same time I was proud to having two kids you know I've been developed that one and now I was working so hard and so dedicated with this one <laughs> to make an Olympic champion but it was a fantastic final I promise it was the most dramatic competition ever in Olympic Games on individual finals it was a head 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 to head and shoulders to shoulders, shoulders competition going up and down the score finally ending with a fantastic result and I'm so happy, I just can't tell you. Thank you. Mary Lou, you have made history twice. <laughs> Once winning the silver for the team competition, and then becoming the all-around champion, and doing it in a way where all the pressure was on. You had to score those tens. Yeah. How do you now calm yourself down and face the next round of competition? Part of that is that mental discipline. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm still on cloud nine right now, but hopefully by Sunday I'll be down. It, it, I was under a lot of pressure, but I, I work better under pressure. It just makes me even more determined, even fight harder just to, to prove it. Did you think, I know you've talked about this before, but at that last moment, what was the last thing that went through your mind? You think about Rick Carey and discipline and perfection. What did you say to yourself before you walked out on that floor? I, I knew I, ha I had to do it. I knew I was, um, I was ahead in the, in the beginning, but I knew I had to hit all four events. Just, you know, having vault and floor as my last two events was strong for me, but also I had to hit my bars and my beam routine. And my beam has gotten so much better, and that's due to Marta Caroli. She, she really doesn't get into the scene as much, but she has helped me so much on beam. It's incredible. Okay, well, Mary Lou, let's take just one more look at your fabulous performance <laughs> when you made history today. <laughs>
What's your signature to the international world of gymnastics? We'll be seeing you again. Back to you, Jim. Thanks a lot, Donna. As you already know, the first American woman ever to win a gymnastics medal in the Olympic Games in individual competition. It was gold. We'll be back with more right after this.